for ever to see and meet uh, you all. Um, the artwork you're hearing and the electronic music you're hearing are reflections of one another. So um, let me just break it down a little bit. Uh, Antarctica is the only place on Earth with no government. And so I took a studio there for six weeks and went to several of the main ice fields to do what I call um, acoustic portraits of ice. So I worked with Dartmouth's Cold Regions Research Labs. It's America's premier uh, lab looking at climate change from the viewpoint of the Arctic and Antarctica. All this electronic music is derived from um, the scientists that I worked with, and I took a couple of equations to generate the electronics. First, Johannes Kepler. Uh, he is considered to be one of the premier proto-scientists of the, uh, you know, a while ago. Uh, but one day he was on his way home in around 1611, if I remember correctly, and a snowflake landed on his sleeve, and he went home and wrote one of the first treatises about mathematics and nature. Uh, another influence is M.C. Escher and his looks at uh, Paradox of Perception. This is just a small sampling of the prints, there's a lot more. that I wrote, uh, that I won a big award from National Geographic for. It's called The Book of Ice. So I work with a group of quantum physicists. Uh, Brian Green who wrote a book called The Elegant Universe about string theory. And ice is actually one of the most interesting fundamental materials of literally of the universe uh, because of hydrogen. And if you think about how hydrogen is spread throughout the universe and all sorts of other uh, really interesting essays um, and the graphics and all the material in here and the compositions are included. So, because this was made in Antarctica, it's an open source initiative, because there's no government, and the whole idea is to do a sort of a pun about nation states and art. Um, so the People's Republic is kind of a fictional space. Um, now, 2016 is also the 500th anniversary of Thomas More's uh, book, Utopia. Um, and if you think about, amusingly enough, 500 years of Utopia, which has not been too peaceful. Um, so. <laughs> You know, so there's a long kind of paradox going on about nation states and of course and how people define the role of art in that nation state. So the penguins, for example, are kind of meant to be a pun about Orwell's uh, animal farm. You know, we're all equal, but some are more equal than others. Uh, the book is in over 17 languages, of which there's a couple samplings of um, uh, Arabic, Hebrew, Korean, Chinese, uh, Greek, and so on. And then I took a whole bunch of World War II and World War I propaganda motifs of sort of founding nation-state themes. And so the book um, was literally written in Antarctica. And um, that won me a big award from National Geographic called the Emerging Explorer Award. chance. I mean, the pun here is, you see, as you see in the book, it's only the tip of the iceberg, uh, which is, again, a very Freudian. Uh, ice has a lot of resonances. Um, one is, of course, in hip-hop, everybody calls up, you know, Ice Cube, Ice T, uh, again, the white guy, Vanilla Ice, or something like that. But there's always a sense of humor about being cool, you know, uh, say, for example, Miles Davis, uh, blues, uh, you know, and so on. So, the blue uh, motif is part of a kind of a vernacular um, where you think about how that affects the way we think about landscape and so on. So um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff on it. If you go to djspooky.com slash Antarctica, there's the, all the music is freely downloadable, and we've had almost a million plus downloads of the album 
of water and ice. Um, and the idea, again, because it's open source, there's a clear directive to say that it's, it's meant to be a, a new kind of palette uh, where you two can make your own version. And the idea of an acoustic uh, portrait is, is kind of the, I think, a conceptual frame looking at artists like Joseph Kosuth on one hand in the 1970s. And the, he has a book called Art After Philosophy and After. Um, and then more contemporary updates where artists are using data to explore sort of what it means to be human right now. That's a big, it's a big theme. Um, and if you've even seen films like Westworld or The Matrix or stuff like that, data is becoming more and more of an eerie kind of uh, mirror that we hold up to society. So um, these issues and climate change, of course, are part of the basic you know, components. So I don't want to speak too much longer than that, but I just did want to give you uh, some tips that it is conceptual art and it's not just concept. And just saying that um, even if you see a print or poster, there's a lot of material substrata underneath that. Um, and I would love to invite you to check out the book. If you can't get the book, because we only have one copy, there's plenty of free versions online. Um, and the idea, of course, is open source. So.